Hey guys, welcome back. Carter Bitsby Trippin. Glad to have you. We're going to get right into this one. This one I've been wanting to explain for a while and ether mine just reminded me of the dark forest and the, the scary place in the memory pool and a service that they're now adding for people that don't want to get wrecked when submitting their transaction, their DEX transactions on Ethereum within the memory pool. And uh, we're going to, we're going to peel this one back. If you want to understand on how this front running and what this means, what ether mine is doing here with being able to do offline transactions and then kind of a pay to play with them where they'll post your transaction for you and not you not get wrecked. You're going to want to watch this one. You're going to want to share this one to your friends and stuff. We're going to break it down for you guys. Let's jump into today's sponsor and get into it. Decentralization is one of the most important factors in a global cryptocurrency network. Bitcoin's proof of work functions due to the exceptional security provided by the miners of the network. Today's sponsor is Compass Mining, a company with a customer focused experience providing a tailored approach to purchasing, hosting, or even an at home option, allowing anyone the opportunity to participate. If this interests you, head over to compassmining.io. All right, let's set the scene here. You are attempting to do a DEX transaction, a decentralized exchange. For people that are not tracking that, that is if you have like a MetaMask wallet that's a tied to your browser, you have a little bit of Ethereum in there and you learn a little bit to be able to interact with something like Uniswap or one inch or a lot of these different decentralized exchanges that are able to convert your currency for a series of other tokens. Maybe you're doing liquidity pool stuff. Maybe you found some opportunity just looking through everything. You have this nice Excel sheet or something and you've like, you know what? I have an opportunity here. I have an arbitrage opportunity here. Or you're a slick developer and you figure out a way to script a transaction set that will net you a huge gain, right? But one of your problems in a decentralized, transparent cryptocurrency is, is the way transactions flow on a cryptocurrency blockchain. So you submit your transaction out and it goes into what we call the dark forest. It goes into the memory pool. So this is just like a queued area where a whole bunch of people are sitting around, you know, all their transactions are sitting around and they, they pay a fee. They pay a priority fee. They pay a base fee whenever you're submitting the transaction. And then what gets on that train? Right. So the mining pools that win the next block, order sort those, look for the best opportunity, and then they will include those into blocks. And including the MEV activity now, the minor extracted value activity, is the actual mining pools themselves looking for opportunities to where they can front run and gain an opportunity for the miners that are upholding the network for them, giving them the opportunity to win the blocks. So you have this very uh, dog eat dog kind of world with the memory pool and where traders are getting wrecked. There's sandwich bots. There's, um, you know, tons of front running, back running, all this activity that's occurring. That's kind of a scary place if you're trying to submit a transaction. So the net, the net effect of what happens is let's say that that rich investor or that person that's good at development, writing scripts, has submitted a transaction to that memory pool. Somebody sees that and immediately front runs that transaction. Well, what ends up happening is that person says, oh, you wanted to use wrapped Ethereum and you wanted to do all these things and you're gonna come out with more money. Well, I can submit that same exact transaction and just bump my priority fee up a little more and who, whatever miner wins that is going to order sort mine ahead of yours and then you get kind of screwed on that deal. You get none of your, your, your transaction just fails. It's not going to work. Somebody else did that activity ahead of you. So what Ethermine has proposed here is that you can connect your wallet up to them and send your private transactions to them ahead of it. And you can submit that to the Ethermine being close to 27% of the network is going to win about a quarter of the block. So you're looking probably at 15 second block time, about a minute to two minutes, you're probably going to get your transaction processed by Ethermine provided that they still hold that kind of network hash rate. And you're bypassing that kind of queue. You're just going off to the side, you're waiting 
and then they're going to tr- include that transaction as part of their effort. So this 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 is where you're talking private transactions, and you'll see some tagging on Ethermine on some transactions, especially high dollar transactions where somebody has done some kind of uh, arbitrage of some sort. You'll see some of these being tagged as private transactions. The my all the the blockchain explorers are doing is they're looking at they see a differential. They're doing a differential essentially on the memory pool of what was there and then what got posted. And they're saying, "Hey, I didn't see this transaction in the memory pool, and somebody included it." So it's either the miner doing it, or it's where they have their own transaction. Maybe they're trying to process people's payments and they're just keeping the transaction fees low and they're just using some block space for that. Or this is a high value transaction and somebody did this privately. Uh, so this is essentially Ethermine kind of coming out and telling you guys, hey, we can do this privately. Set Here's your configuration and setup. We'll have some of that up there for you guys. But just not talking to you guys about it, I want to show you guys what that picture and what that view looks like. So let's, let's zoom in real quick and build a qu- very quick picture to that view that way you guys have a graphic to what this looks like so just a real quick couple things you got a miner or miners they provide hash power to a pool they're what make the pool have enough hash rate to and we'll call this pools they provide hash rate to pools so uh, this is where you where people get confused and they say the miners are whatever at the end of the day the miners are just like me you and folks that are that are providing the hash rate to a pool to have enough through uh, enough uh probability to win blocks okay and then the pool you have an actor over here which is digen dex bro over here doing his transaction and then we have the memory pool of the network and we're going to say this is ethereum this is the ethereum network and this is the memory pool and these folks will go and submit a transaction typically here and then a pool wins a block because it has enough hash rate on the ethereum chain here and then what the pool is going to do it essentially goes through and it reads the mempool and it looks for transactions to include and then it's going to form its transaction set to include inside that block it's going to say tx1 tx2 and it's going to include those into this block right so this transaction bro is what he's saying is that They are now creating a pipeline through an RPC connection to where, let's look for a good uh, little pipeline graphic here. Let's just do this one, this is fine. So this guy's like, I'm tired of getting wrecked. So I'm now gonna go directly to the the pool and just say, when you have an opportunity, include my private transaction the next time you win a block. So you're bypassing this, this dark forest activity here and going straight to the mining pool. That's essentially what's going on. What when you see a service like that? So, real quick, I'm gonna call these like kind of short graphics. Give you guys kind of a highlight of some cool function that's out there, interesting function. Uh, this technically will work the same way on block producers. Um, it's gonna be a little more interesting because block producers, if we talk proof of stake, if this type of activity will work, you'll have to have a conglomerate of validators. And then the probability of those validators winning uh, within an epoch, since it's a deterministic place, meaning uh, during each epoch, you know who the next sets of validators are. I'm assuming there's gonna be scripts that are gonna be like this that are gonna be pretty common to where a validating node that knows that they're gonna be a block, you know, a block producer in a future uh, block that you're gonna have this kind of activity going private. And we'll see how much percentage of the network ends up going private transactions versus public mempools. Um, but this was a quick one for you guys. Hopefully you guys like this kind of content. I promise you we're gonna get to this. We've been recording this. I actually had the, the B-roll for this. I wanna do some more uh, testing. You guys, there's a link down below on our test results of a lot of the cards we've been testing. BBT Ray has been testing those. And you guys can just kind of skip ahead and go straight to that link and see some of the testing results that we have on these GPUs. Uh, We're going to get some actual GPU content out to you guys, I promise. But right now, it seems like this stuff's the important stuff to make sure that you're bringing this stuff to you guys. So like, subscribe, share, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.